Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today you guys, we're at the thrift store, we're at Goodwill. Um, I know that there are a lot of thrifters out there that maybe watch the channel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go into the thrift store. The parking lot is full of cars of people who don't know how to park. So I'm assuming a lot of them are inside. So it'll make it for an inter interesting adventure to say the very least. Uh, yeah, there's always that. Uh, you know, but truth be told, I'm not the biggest thrifter. I do go into thrift stores. Um, I typically don't capture them on camera simply because they have a tendency to be a little bit busier. I know that this is going to be a full voiceover once we get inside. It is what it is. I'm certainly used to doing that. Um, and this is the thing, and, and I'm going to shoot you guys straight. The reason that I am not a big thrifter, I thrifted more when I was doing this part time. Um, and the reason that I don't do this thrifting more is, is because I have a harder time personally. I have a harder time finding items that are of value that I can sell and, and generate profit on. Um, because that profit is how I pay my bills. So, you know, the truth be told, that is why you do not see a lot of that content here on the Cult of Vintage. Again, it's not about, I don't like thrift stores or anything like that. It's just, I have to really concentrate my time, energy, effort on places where I know I can go in, things are cultivated. Um, I haven't been doing yard sales. Uh, for the same reason because it takes such an amount of time and you can spend six hours and you might end up might end up with one thing um, so that has been difficult you know doing estate sales has proven to be a little bit luckier for me in the past um, that I have found to be very difficult in filming because you are in a home it's a very confined space there are a lot of people there, so it's hard to not capture people on camera, and I don't like doing that. So, without further ado, let me shut up and let's get in here and see if we can find anything. Maybe. Here's hoping. Alrighty, guys. The first place I'm going to stop here is in the linen section. Now, if you've been with me in this Goodwill before, then you know this is a smaller Goodwill. So, you know, each of the areas or sections aren't that big. Uh, first item that I see is that pink and gray. It is a newer afghan, though I will say it's really pretty colors. Um, this afghan blanket <laughs> I thought was cool. It had Halloween colors, but it's some sports ball team, Black Panthers. So uh, great for a sports enthusiast, but not really the market that I sell in. Not seeing anything else, so we're about to jump right here. And we're going to move on. Uh, these shelves are relatively new to the Goodwill here. Uh, not really sure what's going on with them. I do see some very Lennox-esque little figurines. I couldn't decide if this was Elvis or John F. Kennedy. Let me know what you think to me. <laughs> in the comments below. Uh, we got some figurines down here that caught my eye. But none that really held my attention. Uh, yeah, pretty standard fare. Now, we've moved on into the main part of the store here. And I do see these Easter... Oh, made in China. Uh, but that's okay. I think they're actually kind of really cute. Um, seems that those were a matching set of taper candles. Um, this one could be for a pillar candle. Nope, they're for a taper candle. They're only $5. Again, I think they're really cute, but... Just not what I'm looking for. Do you remember these? This is a piece from the Bloomsburg County Fair. Uh, it's a little snowman that met his end by being dipped in wax. <laughs> uh, vintage style here with the faux crazing on it. But there, of course, was a very real crack on the back. Be yourself. How punny. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> this was actually really cool. It is from World Market. It's this canister. It's shaped like it is a milk carton. I thought that that was really cute. I did run some quick comps on it. Um, it was hard to determine the actual value. However, it's a little bit more of a contemporary and modern piece, and it does have some condition issues here. You can see it's like flaking. Not is It's not just chipped, but it's kind of flaking there. So I love the piece. I think that it's visually, it's really striking. I think it's super cute. Um, the condition is really getting me on it simply because it's a more contemporary piece. Uh, if it was genuine or true, like vintage or antique, I could look past those issues. Unfortunately, I just can't on this. I'm really hemming and hawing on it. You can tell I'm spinning it this way, that way. I spot another little chip to it. Uh, that said, yeah, it's a pretty dirty bottom, though I could probably get that cleaned. I do decide to leave it behind. Now, here are some little precious moments. Little spice jars shaped like teapots. Has a little transfer wear on it. Uh, there's two cinnamons and two bay leaves. I love the little lids to them with the butterfly and the little bluebird. I did run some comps on it. They're okay. There is some value on them, but it's really just not what I like to sell. We do have this hand carved wood owl. It's really rough. You can just tell the quality really isn't there. Come in, sit down, relax, converse. <laughs> a rolling pin wall pocket with a cute little saying. It's adorable. Don't get me wrong. It really is. And at $2, I don't think it's that bad. But again, it's just not wowing me. Uh, some enamel wear here with some pink lids, very classic 60s, 70s with those vegetable pattern. Unfortunately, it's a bit too common and I'm really trying to look for more unique or specialty kind of items. Those enamel wear tins, I think you can find it just about any Goodwill. I don't know what this is. Is it a dehumidifier <laughs> or a humidifier? It's shaped like an owl. <laughs> Uh, here we go. This is absolutely amazing. It's a little Potter toys in its original packaging. It does have his original hand tag there. He's only $3.99, kind of giving him a once over. Then I decide, oh, do you see his head's moving? Yeah. You wind him up by the little key here on the back. His head does rotate and he plays Beethoven's Fear Elise. The song really sold me on it. So I did get him. Now, the last thing I do spot are these Neil the Frog-esque salt and pepper shakers. I think they're kind of cute, but the bases on them are throwing me off a little bit. Um, they're reading a bit more 80s, which is sad to say it is still still vintage. Um, I do decide that I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't find these, if I can grab a comp on them, because I do think these are cute and kitschy. I wasn't able to find the exact ones and looking at it a bit closer, just not my speed. We're going to move on guys. Well, there was a clown, literally. Is it fitting? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Um, I think that uh, we're going to stop in next door to the Lewisburg Antique Mall. I'm only going to hit up a couple of booths. Um, I think one of my favorite vendors has restocked, so we're going to check that out, and then um, we'll go from there, see how it goes. I'm going to drop off our little clown friend in the car. To be honest, I don't know how this is really going to go because I was here just the other day. I mean, I didn't film, but that's not to say that people haven't put stuff in their booze, so here's a hope. Oh, it got dark. Here's hoping. Okay, guys, here in the front is one of my favorite vendors. Uh, she's got quite a bit of space up here in the front. We do, of course, have some pixies. These are in the treasure craft kind of style. Um, the paint on them is still present, which <laughs> makes them kind of a little bit nicer of a find there. But I'm just not really feeling them, to be honest with you. This is really interesting. I don't know what is going on with this cat. It has had a day. Um, very art deco and sculpt, though it's kind of like a late 50s paint application in the glitter. It is a bank. It's only, what, $5.99? It's a great deal, but I don't know. It just really wasn't speaking to me. I don't know what's going, if that eye is supposed to be closed or if they just forgot to paint it. Uh, we're going to pass. 
Moving on here, I do spot this giant black plush poodle who's in really good condition. Look at that. Now the eyes look like they have like rhinestones, but they're kind of like inverted and it has um, kind of like a diamond cut to it to look like there's rhinestones in it. The shipping on this would be a nightmare. So I do decide to leave them behind, but I thought that that was really worth spotting on video. Look, there's more poodles. These guys are little crocheted bottle koozies, I guess, if you will. This one had soap in it because why not? Um, only $5. I think they're really cute and kitschy and unusual, but it just really wasn't the kitschy unusual that I was looking for, but still fun. And I definitely wanted to capture those on video. Here we've got some amazing pottery pieces, and I absolutely am a sucker for the Celadon glaze, glaze, pardon me. But unfortunately, at 15, I do decide to leave this one behind. I do spot the smaller planter in the front here. I love the Celadon with a bit of a, like, a lava glaze effect to it. It's really interesting, this hobnail. Um, eh, I do decide to leave it behind. I didn't think that it was really dynamic enough. Though looking at it again, I second chances, I probably would have picked it up. We do have an earlier piece of Roseville pottery here. It wasn't priced for me to get for resale, so I did leave that one behind. This absolutely amazing little purse, I guess, or handbag, um, really cute. We got a Hager Swan here. She is very graceful and dynamic. Got a little Westmoreland here. We are spotting our maker's mark. Um, I like this. Again, it just wasn't priced where I necessarily need it to be for resale. So it was still fun to see. I wanted to get it on video. Little cloche here at $12. More of a contemporary piece. Loving this little aqua. Little ruffled candy dish here. She's cute. $10. I like the color, but this sculpt wasn't very dynamic, so I did leave it behind. I almost walked away, and then I saw this LG Wright that is a satin glass with the three faces, little toothpick holder here. Um, the price is right. I think it's weird. I think it's unusual. So we are going to get them. By them, I mean one, two, three. <laughs> Here we've got quite a few little bisque dolls. Uh, most of these do look like they are more of the made in Japan. Um, very 50s to them, 40s, 50s. Uh, I do prefer personally the older ones, the Nippon. Um, you can get some that come out of Germany. I think that they're a little bit more detailed and higher end looking. So still cute. Liking this little Bristol glass of boss here. Um, very thin, almost transparent glass. It obviously has been hand painted. I think that would have had gold detailing there on the interior. A little rough there on the bottom. While I personally like it, I don't think that it's it's really has that wow factor to it. Loving the little hand basket here. She's holding on to a bird. Run, bird. <laughs> Uh, the vendor has it specifically dated at 1889. I'm going to say that she knows her stuff and has uh, dated it correctly. I think that's really an unusual piece. Now, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. This is absolutely amazing. This is actually a decanter, obviously, in like a snouser. It very much has like a clam broth uh, glaze, not glaze, my goodness, clam broth glass look to it, though it is much thicker it is actually a sherry company um, out of italy however this was made specifically um, by an artisan now that artisan's name is are you ready for it archimede beguso oh i might have mispronounced it um but they made specialty glass this was a one-off um, i was having a hard time running comps on it because there's no listing for bischoff sherry glass dog however if I did a little bit better of a search, in which I did, I was able to find out the artisan who actually made it. There are some manufacturing flaws there that you were seeing. However, there are no actual uh, accidental chips or cracks or damage to the piece. This thing goes for about $200 plus. And I was making sure that little thing there, it was, it, it was leftover residue and it wasn't a chip or a crack. I love him. I think he's super cute. It's really unusual. Leave the sticker on. Turn him around. That's a great piece. 
This had me a little unsure. I got to admit, it is obviously a it's Quaker bitters, and I'm like, oh, there's some like sediment in the bottom of it. I don't know about all that now. Um, I think the graphic is fantastic. I, I, I think maybe for a local person, there is zero way I would ship that. Oh my goodness, could you imagine? Now, at this point, we have moved on to a different vendor's booth. The first thing that is capturing my eye is, do you see that cobalt? You can kind of see the cobalt shining through on that carnival glass swung base. Oh, look at this one here. This one's got a pretty amethyst under base to it. It's $70. Darn it. I look at that metallic sheen to it. Oh, look, here is, look, there's two more. Don't you love them? I think they're absolutely beautiful. Very striking. I would have loved to have gotten these, but you know, these collector prices which is great but i definitely wanted to capture them on film obviously you're seeing a lot of beautiful glass look at this look at this this little art nouveau style clock here with the ellie smith the clear glass compo i love those two totally different eras uh totally different design elements but look at how well they blend together uh, because both are really classic Loving that green glass. Uh, I believe it would have originally been, of course, an oil lamp that's been converted into contemporary, though it could be a contemporary made to look, of, of course, like a oil lamp. We got a little Fenton clear opalescent there and the diamond point lace. Loving this little cranberry here. Um, loving the effect here. We're going to pull them out of the case here. Boom. No chips, no cracks to it. Oh. Uh, $20. I think that's really good for a collector. Um, it's a small little piece that you can tuck in for a pop of color, just not where I would need it to be to resell. So buy a little picture. Here we've got Sweet Pete's Treasures. That's right on Instagram. Make sure you give them a follow, you guys. Um, great stuff here. We've got some purple slag glass imperial. The owl, look at those yellow beady eyes, $34.99. Oh, and then we've got this gorgeous Ellie Smith. Uh, it, the simplicity line, the swung vase, she's priced at $110, which is perfect for a collector. Um, those colors, those swung vases, they're getting so much harder to find anymore. But I will say here at Lewisburg Antiques, you will find a number of them. And you're going to see more of them coming up here in the video. We've got some more Viking blue neek in the compote. Uh, the candy dish is missing its lid, but it's still a beautiful piece. Nice splash of color. We definitely want to check it all out here. And then I was thinking about that purple owl. He's priced actually under retail, but not far enough under retail to, for me to warrant getting him. We now have some uh, uranium glass here. We've got our tidbits. I'm really digging this little nappy here with the green opalescent because of course I am. Unfortunately, she doesn't glow. Um, got a little bud vase back here, the rinder, a little powder dish back there and the satin. We'll bust out the flashlight. Yeah, see, she doesn't glow. Oh, well, now, yeah, okay. We must have been in getting reflection off the other uranium. Uh, oh well, c'est la vie, right? Now I said just a second ago you were going to see more swung uh, glass vase, and you're about to. We've been at this vendor's booth before. Everything is beautiful. There's such a strong mid-century vibe going on. Obviously, there's a great appreciation for glass. Um, everything's priced very fairly for collectors. But again, you know, I'm a reseller, so I have to buy under retail, and then I spot it. Oh, but then I spot this. I think this is a beautiful display, and I want to capture this, though, too. Did you see what I spotted? It was in the background. We're creeping up on it very slowly. This actually, that dish underneath is a flamingo. It's a ceramic flamingo pond. It was right back here on top of the Roseville and Weller. Boom, look at that. This is the biggest piece of blue mountain pottery that I have ever found. Look at this dolphin. I thought the sticker was in there. It's just excess glaze. It's only $35. Are you serious? This thing is mammoth. Of course we're going to get this thing. This is amazing. It's majestic. The glaze is perfect with the sculpt and the subject matter. I love this. Score. 
We're going to, oh, yep, see, there we see some more Blue Mountain Pottery with their red glaze. I want to get in here. I was like, well, that dolphin's, all, oh, yep, we got a little beaded purse there. I was like, well, what is this one? How much is this? 20, darn it. The red glaze is harder to find. Um, I think it's a beautiful piece. Obviously, it's very mid-century. At $20, I would have wanted it to be less for resale, so I do leave it behind. However, I do spot this haul, H-U-L-L. -L. This is part of their Ebb and Tide line. Um, I love this collection. This basket is a very it's a harder to find piece than some of the other pieces ran some quick comps on it it sells really strongly for about 70 to 100 so yeah we're gonna pick that up too it's an aquatic theme going on here at lewisburg antiques we're not mad at it right i love that pink interior glaze to it super mid cinch, right who remembers Barbie and the Rockers? It was Mattel's answer to the popularity of Gem and the Holograms. I love color forms. It's priced at $16.99. It is still in its shrink wrap, so that's pretty darn cool. I needed it to be a little bit less to warrant wanting, wanting to get it, so I had to leave that one behind. But just above, what is this? Doodle Duck tricky doodle duck excuse me 98 dollars oof well let's bust them out <gasps> i'm already in love look at that bright blue and the yellow oh look at the red feathered wings to him what is this madness <sighs> look at that oh my gosh that's pure mid-century goodness oh don't you love that color combination it's so bright and vibrant and cheerful what else do we got in here We've got the little bird whistle, the wizardry of making your bird come to you. These are the directions. Yeah, it even has the directions to it. Hmm. Duck operates with a short, loud whistle or hit the duck's body. That's right. No kids, violence is never the answer. I ran a quick comp on him. Um, it, it, it's very fair. It's apparently the going rate for him i just ugh, i love it but the margin just isn't there for me so i gotta put tricky duck back in there Ooh, and then i spot these glasses and i was like i'm really kind of digging these so i decide to try them on um is it me or does it make me look cross-eyed <laughs> <laughs> i'm not entirely mad at it but I'm not feeling it. They had much better vision, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Here we've got a little secretariat loving uh, the very Victorian-esque inlay to it. I had to peek in here. Ooh, look at the inlay is continued. Look, it's on the drawers. Beautiful condition. Definitely not going to ship this beast. Right above it, I'm seeing the London Bridge. These actually contain two liquor bottles there on the towers. Kind of can, can see the glass bottle in the interior. I think that's really cute and unusual. Oh, I don't know if you remember, but I recently just purchased one of these. It's missing its top finial. Um, it is brass. It's kind of beat up. It's definitely been used. Uh, they want $175 for it. I got one that is like new for a better deal. I'm always excited to see that. Oh, this is definitely weird and unusual. It's this fifteen dollar. It's a clown playing a drum with grapes on it. That happens to be a teapot. Um, just says made in Japan. Look at the eyes. The eyes are sending me. Oh, that's so creepy. Goodness, stare into them. <laughs> I do leave them behind. Don't worry. Oh, it's Jabba the Hutt. This is the original Kenner Toys OG Star Wars. He's priced at $20. Ugh. One of my favorite Star Wars characters. Love him. He's so just globulous. Very gelatinous, right? <laughs> I do leave the Star Wars slug behind now. Now this vendor, look at that display. Wow. 
Now, you are probably spotting all of the blue sale signs. Do you think that I spotted a blue sale sign when I was in this booth? Sure didn't. Don't worry, I do catch it at the very end. So I want to kind of peek out. It's right there in front of your face, Michael. Jeez, Elle Louise. Hey, hey, hey. There are two vendors apparently that are sharing a space. One is having a 15% off sale. The other is having a 70% off sale. Uh, like I say, look, look, look. There's a giant blue sign, Michael. Oh, we're spotting some books. Let's check them out. Mm, I don't know. Ooh, she's really rough. She's really, really rough. Yeah. Rose and Charlie. Who are you, Rose and Charlie? Yeah. Oh, it says right there on the cover, Rose and Charlie. Mm. Liking the little floral prints back there. They did one for every, every month. Mm, peek back here. Uh, it looks like some like Midwestern Mexican souvenir pottery. That's not exciting me. Back you go. Painting. Of course, some little mugs up there. We have some decanters. Not really my vibe. Very 60s, 70s throwback to Hollywood Regency. The lamps there. Not overly excited about those. Though I will say that floor lamp, that's pretty special. I like their little setup here. It's very inviting, very warm, very cozy. And I spot this. What is this mess? Mash Hospital. Portable suction apparatus. Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> All right, guys, we are checking out some Empoli class here. Obviously, the genie bottles, as they are known, loving the blue bubble and the amber bubble specifically. Not really sold on the green. And then I noticed the sign, even though it was staring me at the face the entire time. And I said 70% off. Code BRS. Excuse me? All payments accepted. Are these? Yeah, no. Well, of course they're not BRS. Those are JND, which is still 15% off. I'm like, how much were those? Mm -hmm. Yep, darn it. Even with the 15% off of the 105, didn't leave enough room for me to get it. I do spot the Ellie Smith here, the Amberina, um, the Moon and Stars. It's priced at 72. <sighs> I'm not overly excited about it. I was just, you know. I got to double check this because it says BRS, right? And I'm like, well, I've actually spotted some of these pieces here before. These amber glass little candy dish. And this one does appear to be Benton. $12. That makes it $3.60. For $3.60, yeah, I'm going to get that. I've been really digging the amber glass. But again, at $3.60, how can I go wrong with that? I sure can't. Let's set that safely over here on the table. And I'm actually going to go back for this other, this covered candy dish. This is in more of like a honey amber glass. Again, only $3.60. Yeah, we're going to get them. You can see the two different colors there. Obviously, the smaller one, like I said, is more of like a, um, a honey. That taller one's a bit more molasses-y, if you will. Like a little starburst mirror there, but not vintage. Look at this. This giant medical Pyrex. I don't know. What in the world? 225. That lid has, it makes me nervous for some reason. I'm like, what did y'all put in there? <laughs> I don't want to know. All right, guys, we're going to do a quick overview of everything I got. We didn't get a lot, but I got to say the things that we got, I think are really amazing. I'm loving the dog. Of course, that Blue Mountain Pottery, our hall, LG Ray, a little bit of Fenton and some Amber Glass. I'm very pleased. Alrighty, guys, we're going to do the final wrap up outside. I'll see you there. 
Alrighty guys, well there is today's video. I have to say Antique Mall was definitely there uh, for the rescue, appreciate it. I was really pleasantly surprised on the items that we found. That is a huge piece of Blue Mountain Pottery. I'm excited about that. And of course the Art Glass Dog Decanter. I'm really shocked on the comps on that. So amazing scores today, very pleased. Um, remember guys, if you've made it this far, and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's for free, I'd appreciate it. Don't forget for everyone, leave me a comment down below letting me know what your favorite find of the day is or what you yelled at the screen most wishing I had picked up. Either works. And until next time guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye guys.